we tried email, which was a disaster. We tried setting up NNTP servers in biology, but it, it didn't really work. We would send out messages asking for um, students to let us know if they had any problems. We would offer help, but it was all really very quiet. They were worried that they didn't know who was listening in to the conversations, if anybody. They were worried that other people might be able to read the email messages, despite the fact that we had uh, uh, reassured them that wasn't the case. That they, they, they really felt very insecure. And they said that if we could produce a system where they could post messages and at the same time be able to check to see who had read the messages, who had access to the messages but hadn't read them, um, what the access list was, so they could be absolutely sure who had access to read the messages and who didn't, then they were more likely to use the system. So John set to work and produced a system which uh, he called the forums, which um, used um, CGI scripts, as I remember, to produce a sort of a bulletin board. And that went down quite well. The students uh, used it. Uh, we started to think that perhaps we could use it for um, student discussions, um, possibly even go as far as thinking about assess student discussions. So we, we were using our teaching exper experience to inform the development of this system. Uh, and gradually what started off as a student support system started to accrete other, other tools. And eventually we went to the, um, the senior management and asked if we could actually release the code as open source in the hope that somebody else would actually uh, pick it up and help us develop it. And that was the point at which Oxford um, started with Boddington. And a year after that, uh, UHI started with uh, Boddington. And they have really taken over the uh, bulk of Boddington development, uh, taking it to where it is now and to the point where um, it becomes possible to think about Tetra, which really would be, if you like, a, a blending of the best bits of Boddington and, and Sakai. Um, and that's basically where we are now. Well, this is the way that the um, learning environment is organized, actually, at Leeds. This is the central um, VLE. Um, it's organized as a series of buildings. We use a uh, building metaphor for navigation. It's a lot easier to tell a student to go to um, a particular building and then within that building go to the floor corresponding to, let's say, a faculty and then go to a room within on that floor to have a look at learning resources than to have to keep giving them um, URLs. So uh, let's imagine that we're going to go into the Nathan Boddington building, which is the main um, VLE area at Leeds. And um, we are a student who's studying um, medieval studies. That's in the Faculty of Arts. We find the Institute for Medieval Studies. And this student has been told that they've got to do some exercises in paleography, reading old documents. The Java applet is picking up uh, Boddington permissions. This particular applet, as you can see, it's simply about um, translating, if you like, the, the Latin that's here. Um, each of the words here is a clickable image. So if I click on it, it's brought out from the background. So there's the word quad. We have similar exercises for the School of English. And these are designed for students who are studying Renaissance poetry and the School of English liked them to actually study the poems as they were originally written. So I'll choose one here and you'll see that although it's in English it's not particularly easy to read. The reason for this is that at this period people were just changing over from a type of writing called uh, secretary hand to the modern italic hand. Yeah, this is introduction to molecular biology for computer scientists. The built-in bulletin boards within Boddington are limited in that respect. Uh, you can see who's read messages, etc., but they're not really designed for um, moderation, etc. So what we decided to do was we decided to use um, a, an open source bulletin board called MVN Forum. 
and this is a, an open source project. It's actually run by a group in Vietnam, but they've written their code in such a way, it's written in Java just like Boddington, that it's, it's not difficult to uh, link it to Boddington using Shibboleth. And we're actually using the Guanxi uh, implementation of the Shibboleth profile rather than the Internet 2 one. But basically what will happen is that when we click on one of these links, it will take us off to MVM Forum. MVM Forum will then interrogate Boddington to see whether or not we've logged in, whether we've authenticated. Boddington will send an authentication assertion to MVM Forum. An MVM Forum will then ask Boddington for attributes of the student. And those attributes will include the username, the student's real name, and a list of the Boddington groups to which that student belongs. Because MVM Forum is going to mirror those groups. So the student, even if they've never been into MVM Forum before and there's no account from them there, all this will happen on the fly. He knows who I am. All of that information has been picked up from the um, Shibboleth Exchange. It knows what groups I'm a member of, so it presents to me the groups to which I have appropriate access. If a diff different person comes in here, there will be different attributes and there will be different forums presented to that person. I certainly don't see um, the VLE or LNS continuing in the um, form that they currently are, where you have a monolithic application with lots and lots of different tools presented to uh, the teachers and, and the students. Um, you very quickly come to the limits of any tool that you use. You quickly get to the point to say, well, I want to do something extra, how do I do that? And the answer to that usually is to do exactly what we've done here with MVM Forum, which is actually to abandon the tool you are using and to swap in another tool. Now, I can see a situation where you extend this from a single tool to all of the tools of an LMS. That all of the tools should be able to be plugged in and um, swapped around when they become obsolete, if you like. So I can see a situation where um, the VLE or LMS actually shrinks down to a container into which you actually plug these, these learning tools.